So we're finally off on some trekking. We're going to do the Marca Valley starting in Chilling. So it's just like five days to, to kind of as a warm up for our, our bigger treks. But we get to start off with the cable car. I'm not made for the desert. I think I'm melting. It was a long slog uphill on a dirt road to Skew, but after the village the road petered out and we found ourselves mostly alone with the lizards and partridges. Despite the heat, the landscape was beautiful. Stupas and stone shepherd's huts were a common sight, and prayer flags waved at us from many spots along the trail. So the marker track is the busiest trek in Ladakh. Um, I don't know how many people start a day. Dozens, probably. We started in Chilling, which is sort of the shortcut route. So one of the reasons that Marker Valley is so popular is that you can actually do homestays the whole way. So that means that you show up and someone lets you sleep in a bed and cooks you dinner and breakfast and packs you a big lunch and off you go. But we brought all of our camping gear to Ladakh and we thought it would, it would have been a waste if we didn't use it. So we're camping and the whole way here I was kind of cursing that decision because the packs were so heavy and it was so hot. But now everybody who's passed this is exhausted and has another hour and a half and we are camping and resting and it's wonderful. So since I'm wearing boots that I'd usually wear for mountains. My feet are so hot and I've already got a bunch of blisters. Bummer. How are we feeling, Clay? Uh, kind of tired. Kind of tired. Just did some uphill. Oh! Oh, we did! Look at that! Many walls are a common sight in this valley. Over hundreds of years, local monks and villagers have carved these flat stones with mantras and left them as offerings to the spirits. So we're just about to enter the village of Marka. Clay's off trying to find a geocache, but man, my feet hurt so much. They're super blistered, but I should have stopped and doctored them yesterday as soon as I started feeling the hot spots. At least it's cooler today. We even had a little bit of a downpour earlier, so that was kind of nice. Feels a little bit like we're approaching a castle. You asses. And we're off on day two. No, we're off on day three. We camped about a kilometer and a half past Marka. And now we have dreams of getting to Nimeling this afternoon. So we're probably about 3,700 meters now. We probably have like 800 meters to go up today. I thought that since we slept so close to Marka that we would finally see the clouds that were supposed to be all over Marka Valley. But we haven't seen them yet. So 
to go up to the monastery or not? I'm gonna say no. That's Amon, folks. A homestay, a campground, and a couple of tea tents. And the baby donkey. Have you ever been on the trail and been like, man, I wish there was a Starbucks around the next corner? Well, it almost sounds like there is. These buildings just blend in with the landscape. As we continued up the valley, we started to notice how much the altitude was slowing us down. What would have been a straightforward hike at home was now exhausting. After much searching for a passable campsite, we decided to stop early on an exposed slope and hunker down for the afternoon. So while stopping our ascent a little early was probably a good idea for our health, we're now stuck with no shade until the sun goes beneath the mountains. So we've made a little fort. Look at our craftsmanship. Amazing, right? Yeah, we're going to have to try something else. Well, that's a bit better, isn't it? So I'm icing my quad with rocks from the stream. I'm a little worried about it actually. Look at all that dust on there. It just felt a little crampy as I was walking, so I tried to increase my water intake and took some electrolytes and then as soon as we stopped it started hurting a lot more. So hopefully icing and stretching and lots of water will make it uh, fit for tomorrow. They brought back a little present for me. He's so sweet. We have these little rock pens that we see periodically. And they're all full of garbage. At first we were kind of annoyed. But then one of them had a label that said dustbin, use me. So I guess that's the closest they can get to um, controlling the garbage the truckers leave is by at least getting them to contain it. But I don't think that it's ever going to leave there. There's a pass that we're headed up to tomorrow. Should be good times. 5,200 meters. What do you want, buddy? This is Nimling, home for tonight. No, I bet that feels good. Right next to our tent. This is my new friend. He's coming back to Canada with me. Right? We're buddies. Sampa five days in a row with hardly any sleep at elevation. It's hard to get down. It's hard to get down. So for breakfast, we've been having Sampa, which is ground buckwheat. Or maybe barley. I don't know. You'd think I should. You'd think I would. Since we've been eating it for the last five days. So we put some sunflower seeds and. Oh, I'm out of breath. We put some sunflower seeds and some raisins in it and um, some sugar and milk powder and it's um, it was okay the first day and now it's kind of revolting. It's 7:30 and we're way there. It feels like we've been going a while, but it's been half an hour. Today, we are headed over the pass, the, the pass that has a name that we don't remember at the moment, but um, I can put it down below. That's where we're headed, a little divot. And then it will be a long, painful slog down. I think we're going down like a few thousand meters in one day.
This King Angst, over 6,000 meters. Well, we're on to the last bit of ascent. Chloe did it yesterday for fun. And he says that it's harder than it looks. And we're finally seeing the reported crowds because everyone stays at Nimaling so they can do the ascent in the morning. So there's a tour group of like, including guides, there's 16 people and that we're kind of stuck right in between them. Um, so we're trying to wait it out and let them pass. Camera doesn't do these justice. We decided to opt out of the Goutway. We got about an hour and a half left. You can tell we're getting to the end because you have a scooter and power lines. And a school, I think. And now we have an oh so fun slog along a Jeep road for an hour and a half. And we got some oxygen back, but it came at the price of heat. I'm having fantasies that the driver we have booked to pick us up in Shamsamdu will just come on down here and pick us up. So while I do the channel of the week, you can take a quick sneak peek at the next installment of our Ladakh trip. So this week's channel of the week goes to Amos over at Backpacker Diaries. He puts out a lot of great content on his backpacking trips, he really puts them together well, and he's putting a lot of videos out from his summer adventures in Utah and the Appalachian Trail right now. Like all of my channels of the week, he definitely deserves more subscribers, so go check him out. That's it, so long and see you next week-ish.